What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Too Pop to Handle. I'm your host, Andrew Nucatola, your pop culture best friend. And as always, I hope you guys are having a fabulous week. I am so excited to be coming at you guys with this bonus episode. If you cannot tell by the title, we are diving into Sabrina Carpenter's latest album, short and sweet, track by track, lyric by lyric, production note by production note. We are going to get all up in this album, get into the nitty gritty, and just get up close and personal with everybody's favorite 411 blonde pop star, Miss Sabrina Carpenter. Now, before before we get into the good stuff, I just wanted to give a little disclaimer. If anybody is new here, if this is the first time you are hearing my voice or coming across to pop to handle, first and foremost, hello, welcome. Thank you for being here. And just a heads up, this is not the normal run of show for the podcast. I upload every single Wednesday and I am bringing you all of the pop culture moments from the week that were just too pop to handle, whether that is music, TV, movies, just like the buzzing pop culture stories. That is the normal run of show. But every so often, I like to hop on and do a little extra bonus episode and just kind of get into, like I said, the nitty gritty of an album and just really dive in. We talk about new music releases a lot on the main show on the podcast, but I don't have enough time to talk about an entire body of work plus the other buzzy pop culture thing. So time and time again, I will hop on and do these bonus episodes. I like to call them Drew releases, which, you know, a play on words from my name. So this is what you're getting. But like I said, this is not the normal run of show. But if you like the pop girls, you know, Sabrina, Chapel, Charlie, Taylor, Beyonce, Miley, that whole vibe, Ariana, Stick around. I think you will really enjoy the main show. I would love it if you subscribed, left me a comment, left me a rating. And yeah, like I said, welcome to the Two Pop the Handle family. And now I think without any further ado, I think it is best that we just hop into this perfect pop album because I am, I am so excited. I am loving this album. If you follow me anywhere, if you listen to last week's episode, you know that I am all over this album front to back i think it is perfect i think there are no skips i think it is just a gorgeous body of work i just actually looked at my apple music replay for august and they give you like your top album of the month and somehow in the six or seven days that we had short and sweet in august it was my top played album so if that gives you any inkling of how much i am loving this release just take that as you will but like i said this album i just think it is perfect though it is only 36 minutes i think they did they being sabrina and the producers which we'll get into the producer credits in just a moment but i think the four of that or five of them rather did such a fantastic job at giving us these 12 tracks and not making us want more. I think each song in and of itself and the album as a whole really delivered an entire cohesive body of work and entire cohesive songs in each individual track that we weren't longing for more where some albums where that are 36 minutes long or a little bit shorter than that you might be wanting an extra chorus or maybe you want a longer bridge or a bridge if there's not one at all so i think they did such a good job at you know layering different parts of it the dynamics the writing the the depth that they got into with the production i just think they did such a fabulous job and enough talking about the job they did let's give credit where credit is due because we have four producers on this album so we're going to go through them we'll talk a little bit about about the things that they've worked on in the past because they have a stacked resume all four of them and then let's get into the nitty-gritty so first up on our list is jack antonoff and i feel like with jack you either love him or you hate him over here at two pop the handle we love jack antonoff i feel like he's the most you know well known and like recognizable name he's worked with obviously taylor swift lord carly ray jepsen his own projects like bleachers fun he is just like a mainstay in production and i think his work on this album is chef's kiss fantastic. I loved it. Like I said, we have no room for Jack Antonoff slander over here at Tupop to Handle. Moving right along to our next producer, somebody who has actually worked with Sabrina before, John Ryan. He has produced Fast Times, Because I Liked a Boy, Already Over, Decode, and Feather, which are all from emails I can't send. And he's also produced three, I'm sorry, four uh, albums for, for this, you know, this band that you might have heard of, uh, One Direction. He produced Made in the AM for Midnight Memories, and Take Me Home, which are just like pillars in the One Direction discography, I feel like. So knowing that he worked on those albums, plus those tracks on emails I can't send, we are in fantastic hands with Mr. Ryan on our side on this one. And this third producer, I think he might be the one that I was most excited to see. His lineup of things that he's produced are just like so too pop to handle coded. First things first, 
Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa. If you know me, you know that Don't Start Now is one of my all-time favorite songs in the world. I think it is one of the best pop songs we have gotten in the last five, I guess now, six years, whenever it came out, what, 2019? So yeah, five, six years, God time flies when you're having fun and when there's a global pandemic, you know, in between it. That being said, we are talking about Mr. Ian Kirkpatrick. Like I said, he produced Don't Start Now by Miss Dua Lipa. He was also a producer on her latest project, Radical Optimism, which I loved. He produced Crash by Charlie XCX and Something to Give Each Other by Troy Zavon, which all of those albums are just like like killer pop albums in my world so knowing that he had a hand in this perfect pop album it just makes sense you know what I mean like the math is mathing with that one <laughs> and then the final producer that we have on this album is Julian Bunetta he wrote on Nonsense with Sabrina on the last album and he's also written for One Direction Harry Styles and Niall Horan so again just people who are they have their hands in the pop music world so they are, you know, they are good hands to trust and trust they did because they helped put together a perfect body of work. So let's dive into these tracks because I cannot get enough. Kicking off with such a strong opening track is crucial, I think, for any album, especially when you've had the come up in the year that Sabrina Carpenter has had. And opening the album with the line, oh, I leave quite an impression, five feet to be exact, is a killer first impression for this album. Not only is it tying into the idea of short and sweet, where she's saying, yeah, I'm only five feet tall, that's the impression I'm going to leave, but it gives us a look into her humor. So maybe somebody who's not as familiar with her, or maybe they don't, they only know some of the singles, they don't know all the album tracks. Like, this is such like cookie cutter, Sabrina Carpenter humor. She's just always on the, in on the joke. She's ready to like, you know, make somebody laugh and just like be silly with her music. And I think this opening line is just, perfection. I When I first heard it, I was like, oh, bitch, we are in for it. I loved it. Moving along, I think the next line that really made me be like, oh, bitch, we are only, what, 30 seconds into this album and you are giving it to us. She says, you wonder where all his clothes went missing my bodies, where they're at. So at surface level, you could look at this and be like, oh, shit, like she is clearly directing this at the the ex-girlfriend who now they're back together with. But not only that, if you are chronically online and dive deeper into the um, Shawn Mendes, Camila, Camea, Camila Cabello, excuse me, and Sabrina Carpenter of it all, which we actually did on my latest episode. So if you're interested in that love triangle timeline, go check out the episode from last week because I did a whole deep dive there. But there are a handful of photos of Sabrina Carpenter wearing Shawn Mendes' clothes shortly after they were spotted together so this kind of just like gives that nod of like a you could see it as like surface level like oh you're look you you're wondering where his clothes are i have them hun sorry but then when you really boil it down and think about like the logistics of it like she is literally singing this uh, you know assuming that it's about sean we can assume that it is about sean mendez she is literally saying oh yep those pictures they, they were his clothes this is how it went you guys are in for a story and i just a story she gave us because the way that she just kind of goes through this song the whole i heard you back together and if it's true you'll just have to taste me when he's kissing you she is laying down the law on this girl she is like well i know you know you guys are back together i hope you're having fun but he was kissing me 45 seconds ago and now he's kissing you i hope my lip gloss tastes good bitch like she is just like naughty the like pedaling to the metal on this she's like oh well so happy you guys are back together i hope i taste good bitch which it's never you know it's never fun if you're in that situation where like somebody's with an ex-girlfriend they break up you guys get together and then they you guys break up and they get back together with the ex you just have to kind of sit there and be like oh okay cool so like what about all the shit that you talked which we'll get into that in a, in a little bit on another track but like it's kind of just like hmm, interesting like didn't you leave her for a reason you know and i think sabrina is feeling that on this track uh moving right along through into the next verse i love this next line um he's funny now all his jokes hit different guess who he learned them from she's like oh yep you guys broke it off I got, you know, you sent him off to me. I shaped him into a better person. I gave him all these jokes. I made him funny. And then he left me high and dry. And he's coming back to you and repurposing my jokes, which again, is very much just like, oh, you were with her. You left her. You're with me. You left me. And now you're back with her after all the shit that you guys, you know, maybe the shit that you talked about her to me or, you know, whatever it may be. This also kind of just gives me that like, 
uh, and I hate to even tie this in so early on, but if you look back at like Deja Vu by Olivia Rodrigo, where she's like talking about like all the things that they did together, now she's doing it with the new girl. And unfortunately, in that situation, the new girl in question is Miss Sabrina Carpenter. It kind of just gives that nod back to it. And it's like, wow, people are consistently living the exact same timeline there is no such thing as an original thought and i just i love that little line she's like yep i invented him like i made him better i hope you enjoy my second now bitch <laughs> and then moving right along i love in the bridge you know she just kind of like gets into it and the whole the last line in the bridge saying i know i've been known to share again just tying in that olivia rodrigo joshua bassett of it all this whole drama where like obviously sean and camila were together and then they split and then Sabrina was with him not long after and like she's clearly just like like leaning in to the joke which I think is the best way to approach any type of PR situation just lean into it if they're, if they're saying something about you that isn't necessarily like hurting you lean into it have fun and again I think Sabrina Carpenter does such a fantastic job at being in on the joke and like making the most of it as we'll see through this album but also as we've seen in so many situations in her career thus far just looking back even like her nonsense outros like so many of the lines on feather so many of the lines on on emails I can't send like she's very good at just like taking the joke and running with it and like almost being ahead of it like she like before it can even be a punchline, she's writing it and she's kind of rewriting the narrative. And I love that about her. I love a pop star who's not afraid to just like go with it, have fun and like fuck what people say, like make the most of it, write an album about it. And that's exactly what she did, which I just, we love to see it. And then wrapping up this song, the laugh at the end of the bridge and then goes right into the chorus. It just, again, adds that fun little sprinkle of her humor into it. She is really just like getting the last laugh. She's like, yep, I've been known to share. Hope I taste good, bitch, because he was just with me. And she's just like laughing through the end of the bridge into the chorus, which is just like such a fun little sprinkle. She's really good at like adding in little extra, little like, I'm, I'm assuming it's post-production like sprinkles and we'll talk about it more later, but where she just like talks over a track or she adds a laugh into it like I love the way that she kind of breaks that fourth wall with the audience by adding in little things to the song that were clearly done after the fact and maybe it is like a live reaction when she was listening to it and they just had the mic on like whatever it may be she did a lot on emails I can't send as well but I just love the way she kind of it gives the listener a better like understanding of the song almost and kind of like opens that door to like the artist's world if you allow it to kind of be that way and I just love the way that she does it I think this is a killer opening track I love it it is fantastic I love the music video I won't get into it because I talked about it on my episode on Wednesday so if you want my take on that you can go listen to that episode spoiler alert I fucking loved it but that being said let's keep this ball rolling because we are going on to a track that we all know and love please 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 this track has been out for a while now. I want to say like two, maybe three months. I'm like losing track of time. Like I said, time flies when you're having fun. But we all know this song. We all love this song. I'm not going to go too deep into it. But I just, I think this song is such a, it's, it's just so good. The whole message behind it being like, can you please behave? Don't embarrass me. Even like the opening line being like, I know I have good judgment. I know I have good taste. It's funny and it's ironic that only I feel that way. Like clearly her friends don't always agree with the guys that she is dating. And you know, maybe they're not the biggest fans, which we've all been there. I have been at least. If you haven't been there, good for you. If your friends have always loved the guys that you're dating, you are, you, I, you you're like the pick of the litter. I, <laughs> To have your friend like every single guy you've ever dated, again, I just don't think that's factual. And if you think that is your situation, I'm sorry, you're lying to yourself. But if by some odd chance you have experience, you know, A pluses across the board, you've cracked the code, girl. I don't know how you did it, but good for you. Um, but again, I just, I love this track. It kind of tells the story. It's like, even in that second chorus where, end of verse rather, where it kind of picks up that tempo and it kind of is like her storytelling it. I almost see the song as like, she's talking talking to herself and her man at the same time and then in that second chorus she's kind of like getting closer to the point where they're about to go out and she's like oh my god wait 
we're about to leave. Like, is he going to embarrass me tonight? Like, what's going to go on? Um, and she's like, almost like begging. I mean, she literally is begging him. She's like, please, like, please, please, please do not prove my friends right. I do not want them to think I'm with another guy who is not good for me. And she's kind of on that fence of like, are you good for me? Are you not? Which is kind of a theme that we see throughout the album. Um, and then I think a, one of the biggest lines in this song that we kind of see float in and out of a constant theme of this album is, if you don't want to cry to my music, don't don't make me hate you so prolifically, which we'll get into even in the next track, Good Graces, which I cannot wait to talk about. Spoiler alert, it is my favorite. But she's saying, she's like, if you don't want to cry to my music in two to three years when I release an album, don't make me hate you. Don't embarrass me. Don't be fucking stupid. It is as simple as that. And I think that is the perfect segue into track three on this album, Good Graces. Now, this track is my favorite. Like I said, it is a perfect pop song. Before I listened to the album, I had three people, two of my best friends and my boyfriend, tell me this is going to be your favorite track on the album. And boy, do they know me like the back of my damn hand because they were correct. I fucking love this song. I think it is perfect from start to finish. I think the the writing style, I think the production of it, it is so fantastic. So let's dive in. I mean, starting the song off, she said, when I love you, I'm sweet like an angel, drawing hearts around our names, dreaming of writing vows, rocking cradles, but don't mistake my nice for naive. She's saying, she's like, if we're good and I love you, I am going to be sweet as pie, tying in that idea of like short and sweet. Like she's a sweet gal. She doesn't want to have to be a bitch, but you know, we'll get into the fact that like, if she has to be a bitch, she'll be a bitch. But she's saying, she's like, I'm dreaming of writing our vows, having your baby. She says rocking cradles. But again, don't mistake my nice for naive. I might be planning our future, but fuck around and you will find out. Uh, she goes around, she says, I don't waste a second. I know a lot of guys do something suspect. You can kiss this cute ass bye-bye. Do her wrong and she is out quick. She will leave your ass just as fast as you fucked around and found out, which, you know what? We love to see it. Don't let any man walk all over you, bitch. <laughs> Again, if you don't want to cry to her music, don't make her hate you so prolifically. And the whole, the chorus, I mean, just like, stay up and stay in my good graces. Like, if you want me to treat you right, treat me right. I will give you the respect that you give to me. Don't stay in my good graces and I'll switch it up like that. Like, it is, it's simple. She is literally laying it out for you. She can turn her love into hate very quick. And if you give her a reason to, I would be afraid of her. You know, she might be 4'11", but I would still, I, we've all seen the taste video. That girl, she could throw a knife. She will, she will, you know, she'll dig that knife right back into your back. So I would, I, you know, I wouldn't cross Sabrina Carpenter if I was one of her love interests. That's all I'm going to say there. And then this post chorus this is what i was talking about when i said that they did such a good job with the production and the levels and the dynamics of this song this song doesn't have a bridge and where i usually think a bridge is so needed in a song this song having the pre-chorus the post chorus all those dynamics plus that little like outro where they repeat it at the end it just makes it feel like a full rounded song without following that typical equation of a song where it's like chorus uh verse chorus verse chorus bridge final chorus she really did a good job at experimenting with like breaking that boundary and tying in an extra post chorus or a pre-chorus and just like switching up the tempo or the beat and she did it a lot throughout this album which i just think is like such a fun way to experiment with again breaking out of that typical equation of a song that for so long everybody stayed in like i said it's like that that typical equation is a song it's verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus done this i just love the way she did it again no song feels unfinished to me and I just I love this song but like I said that post chorus it is so good and I have not been able to stop singing it all week it literally I'll just be walking down the street and I'm like I won't give a fuck about you I won't give a fuck about you I can't stop it is so good it is so catchy it's in my head and I love the pause and she goes that was cool like I said where she ties in that like breaking the fourth wall and really gives us like a a side of her in whether it was post-production or whether she just wanted to like add a little sprinkle of her Sabrina isms if you will, on top of it. I just, I love this song. I think it is so fantastic. She even says, she's like, she's like, I'll date your favorite athlete if I have to. Like, fuck with me and find out, which is a theme throughout the album. But there's also some other songs, which we're going to get into, where she's saying, she's like, yeah, you might fuck around and um, I'm still going to come back around to you, which we've all been there, you know? Like, we have all been in the situation where we know we should leave and we know something is wrong, but we don't leave. And we will get into that 
in just a bit, but we're going to move right along into the next track, which is Sharpest Tool. This song is such a beautifully written way to call somebody a fucking idiot, and I <laughs> love that. This is a track that it's produced by Jack Antonoff, and you can just tell it's produced by him. It has that, like, light, feathery, like, that, like, Jack Antonoff touch to it, which I just love, but she literally starts the song. She's saying, I know you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. We had sex, met your best friend, then a bird flies by and you forget, which she's saying we are having all of these moments where to me like having sex meeting your best friends maybe we're going on dates maybe we're meeting families or something like she's they're doing all of these things that are like major moments to her but clearly to the guy that she's seeing is not as important to him and he is not seeing it to the same level that she is which is not a good feeling i've been there i'm sure a lot of people listening have been there where like you're just like you're overthinking a situation you're like oh my god i met his friend we hooked up we're going on dates like we must be on the road to something next and then you don't hear from him for two days which just not a good idea even like saying like a bird flies by and you forget like he forgets literally in the blink of an eye so next line she says i don't hear a word until your guilt creeps in send a soft hey as if you don't recall the time he ghosts her for a few days and then he's like oh fuck i haven't talked to this girl in a few days let me hit her up make sure you know keep her keep her on my line just kind of you know keep like like baiting her in and just like catching her in my net which just like a shitty thing to do and you know any man who does this to you is not a man that you want to be with um the pre-chorus though i think the imagery is so good where she said we were going right till you took a left it's pretty self-explanatory but that idea of like they were like driving down the road they were doing the right thing they were going right and then out of nowhere he took a left clearly in the first line like they are not on the same page things are going right out of nowhere he just like flips the script things are not going the right way that they're going second guessing their choices uh it's making her feel like an idiot and again another situation we've all been in where you're like you're second guessing like what 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 did that mean we i met his best friend we hung out like you guys went on a date you guys like did all the date relationship things and like things are are lining up to be that you guys are going to date and then out of nowhere you're going right he takes a he takes a left and it, just, it fucks with your head like you don't want to disturb that peace but you're like what the fuck am i supposed to do like she says that she's second guessing her choices and is making her feel like an idiot which again another situation that we've all been in and like we think something's more serious because they fuck with your head and they make you think it is and you think that you guys are on the right path to being in a relationship and then boom out of nowhere goodbye but then as we learn they never talk about it the next line i think or the next like few lines where she just keeps repeating like we never talk about it over and over she doesn't want to disturb the peace she doesn't want to like she doesn't want to mess a potentially good thing up so she just like lives in this silence she lives in her head she doesn't want to bring anything up and like show him like oh my god well i thought that because i met your friends we were going to be more serious like you know you never want to seem like you're being crazy and you're like jumping to conclusions or things like that but like we learn quick through this album that you should always speak your mind don't live in the silence don't maintain the peace if something is not rubbing you the right way bring it up because that's the only way something is going to be changed i've lived through it i'm sure some people listening have lived through it it's just that's not the way to live things you know if something's bothering you especially if you're not dating this man yet bring it up ruin his day who gives a fuck if he is going to introduce you to his best friend and then ghost you for a few days Mm -mm -mm. not on my watch and not on sabrina's either <laughs> i love what she did with the bridge of the song they kind of speed it up a little bit and it almost makes you feel like you're living in her head with her and all the thoughts that she's having and it kind of is just like it's she's just like having all these thoughts and she's like we never talked about how you found god at your ex's house and she knew that he was cheating but they never talk about it uh she brings up the fact that his phone is always turned face down which not the face down phone baby girl like that is always a telltale sign that something is up um she said seems like overnight i just turned into i turned into a bitch that you hate now but we never talk about it like they never talk about why out of nowhere he flipped the script what is going on why is your phone flipped upside down what happened at your ex's house like what is going on and then this next line punched me in the fucking gut and i was just like "Ooh, girl i feel for you she says we never talked it through how you guilt tripped me to open up for you then you logged out leaving me dumbfounded fuck every single man who guilt trips anybody into opening up to you to make you feel comfortable or to you know make you feel like you know they're you're special to them and things like that if anybody if anybody listening to this has ever let somebody open up to them and they don't have good intentions of like 
being there for them or like wanting to help them through a situation maybe they're opening up to you about get fucked because that is such a shitty thing to do becoming vulnerable with someone especially in a situation like this where they i don't believe they're dating at this point they're kind of just like dating around and you know they they're going right then they take a left but he's guilt tripping you to make you think oh you can tell me anything you know tell me about your past tell me about what bothers you tell me about things you're scared of and if he's just guilt tripping you into opening up and then completely logging out as she says get fucked that is such a shitty thing to do and i've been there unfortunately so i'm sure a lot of people listening again nobody has original thoughts these are not this is not the first time these things have happened men suck and women too i'm sure this happens with women as well but as a gay man i only really have experience with men and as a uh, predominantly female audience i'm assuming a lot of you guys have dealt with shitty men as well because there's a lot of them but yeah this is just like a shitty situation to be in and then she repeats that that bridge or that like post chorus again which just she like doubles down i love when an artist repeats a whole verse or it really just shows you like this is the message i'm trying to convey with the song like i always think of cruel summer by taylor swift because she repeats that chorus the bridge rather again and she just like she I, and like she is trying to get this point across she wants you to know that she is drunk in the back of this fucking car but but anytime an artist chooses to repeat like a verse or a bridge or like a pre or post chorus not so much the chorus obviously because that is like a key component of songwriting repeating the chorus over and over but when it's like a verse or a bridge that gets repeated i am just like okay this is what they are trying to tell us and the fact that she repeated that part i was like ooh, baby girl was going through it <laughs> moving right along into the next track this is where i see it as a point in the relationship where she is starting to realize why the phone is upside down and you know what happened at the ex's house and like maybe all the things that that he is telling her are 100 through we are talking about coincidence so first right off the bat she's saying i put my head in your chest she knew she's got a real sixth sense how did she know how does she know that you're with me how does she know that you know we're hanging out doing our things like what is going on like there's no reason that she would know these things um unless unless you're telling her maybe that's why the phone is flipped upside down she goes on to say her name comes up once then twice without her even being around you and she mentions that she's in the same city as you the same night what a coincidence like oh how how funny that you happen to be away in this city or whatever it may be and she's she's also there what how weird you guys couldn't have planned that right what a coincidence this song the like the storytelling and like the the uh the storytelling and just like the way that she you can tell that she's like saying this to the guy it almost is like musical theater to me i feel like she is like dipping back into not the sound so much but dipping back into that way of like broadway musical where you're like singing a conversation because this feels like she's like saying it to somebody and she's like bringing it up to them and i think the little oh no 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 that they do like between the bridge and the chorus or the choruses and the verse it just kind of adds to that like musical humor and it emulates that like a silliness to these realizations she's like oh hmm my head's on your chest and she knows how weird her name came up once her now is coming up again you guys are in the same city she says like oh you're sucking up to her mutual friends oh what a coincidence how weird but i think the most important like the star of this entire song and honestly probably one of my favorite parts of the entire album is the bridge of this song because she just kind of lays down the law and again it's one of the situations where it's like if you know you know where she brings up palm springs because of coachella the sean and camila of it all so let's get into this bridge she says what a surprise your phone just died your car drove itself from la to her thighs palm springs looks nice but who's by your side damn it she looks kind of like the girl that you outgrew at least that's what she said she's like you left me your phone died what a coincidence you are now in palm springs but who are you with and then those paparazzi photos of sean and camila come out when they're at coachella in palm springs and she's like damn she looks so much like that girl that you told me that you outgrew because again if you think back to taste they were together now they're back they broke up they're back together and i'm sure in that in between where I'm going to just say Sean and Camila weren't together. I'm sure he was saying, like, you don't have to worry about her. I'm over her. I outgrew her. We're going to get into the Sean Mendez, like, mind fuckery of it all in just a little bit. But clearly she's like, oh, I thought you guys, I thought you outgrew her. What's going on now? What's the tea there, honeybee? Like, what is going on? Um, and then just ending the song where she's like, oh, wow, you just broke up again. What a coincidence. And then they just start laughing over it. She's like, yeah, no fucking shit, you guys broke up. 
I'm sure he talked mad shit about this girl to Sabrina when they were together in between their flings. And now she's like, oh, you hated all those things about her at the first time? Baby boy, nothing has changed. It's been 45 seconds since you drove your car into her thighs. What the fuck do you think is going to happen? What a coincidence that you guys broke up. And then she's laughing in the background over that last verse. And again, the, oh, no, 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 no. Like, it just feels silly to me. Like, it's just like they're like, it's almost like musical laughter to me. And maybe that's just me having like a musical theater muscle in my brain where I'm like, it just, I can like see them acting this song out on a stage. I don't know. I just, I love this track. I think the production on it is great. Again, that bridge is like a top three moment of the entire album for me. I am obsessed. And something else I am obsessed with is Sabrina Carpenter and Barry Keoghan, which leads me in to the next track, Bed Cam. So this is one of the first times that we're really getting a look into Sabrina and Barry's relationship and like the early stages of it. You could argue that Please, Please, Please is about her and Barry. I don't know if it is about him or if he was just in the music video for like the pop culture moment of it all I really hope it's not about Barry because she's kind of being like don't embarrass me please but who knows it could very much be about Barry but that being said we are getting into bed cam which is such a saucy song and I really I think this is this song does such a good like storytelling and like painting a picture of their early days of their relationship so this one is for the Barry and Sabrina stands which uh, if you don't listen to the main show, they are my favorite celebrity couple at the moment. So I, anything about the two of them, I'm going to eat up. So let's get into this. She says, I was in a sheer dress the day that we met. We were both in a rush. We talked for a sec. Your friend hit me up so we could connect. And what are the odds you send me the text? Now, the sheer dress that she's talking about is alleged to be the dress that she wore to the Paris Fashion Week Givenchy event in 2023, which is where they both were at. We'll get into knowing that Barry was there in a minute and, you know, something that she ties in about what he's wearing. But it just kind of like, it paints that picture of like, okay, they were at a fashion show. It was quick. Maybe they brushed shoulders. I'm like, hi, I'm Sabrina. Nice to meet you. I'm Barry. Nice to meet you. And then it kind of lingers in their mind and her, you know, the friend connects them. They start chatting and it's like, it's what they wanted, you know, it's always like damn I wish I would have I would have like stayed and talked to him for a few seconds later or I wish I would have gotten his number or something but luckily this friend comes in connects the two of them and now they are texting and they are being naughty in these texts she's saying that I'm manifesting that you're oversized I digress you got me scrolling like oof I'm out of breath got me going like like what is Barry sending her what are they saying in these texts they are getting down in the dms or the iMessage if you will <laughs> <laughs> um, and then tying in this being more about Barry and kind of just like the obvious point of it. She goes, who's the cute boy with the white jacket and the thick accent? Clearly, Barry is wearing a white jacket that night. He has the thickest accent I've ever heard. So this it paints the picture right there. This, this is about Mr. Keoghan. And she's just like fantasizing about this guy with the white jacket and the thick accent. Like she is fully, she she's like dreaming about what could be with this man because I don't know. He just, he, he left her wondering. And the chorus is just, she's fully dreaming about what it's going to be like when her and Mr. Keoghan get down in the bedroom. Like she is down bad for this guy. She's like, are you free next week? Can we meet up? I think we'd have a really good bed cam. Like she is ready to get down and dirty with Mr. Saltburn. And as somebody who loves the two of them as a couple, I love this. I am all into it. But then we get to this second verse. And now if you want to talk about highlights of the album, this is my number one highlight of the entire album. This second verse. I mean, I'm just going to get into it. <laughs> she says, come ride on me. I mean, camaraderie said you're not in my time zone, but you want to be. Where art thou? Why not upon with me? See it in my mind. Let's fulfill the prophecy. Do I need to say anything? Like she is so naughty. Come ride on me. I mean, camaraderie. Girl girl <laughs> um said you're not in my time zone but you want to be barry's in london she's at home where art thou why not upon with me kind of tied in like a romeo and juliet theme to it um and can also be tied to saltburn because they have that scene in saltburn where they do that party and it's very romeo and juliet-esque you know they're wearing the mask it's very like Shakespeare, you know, that whole vibe. So I kind of tied that into it, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but kind just very much getting, you know, the whole, the whole picture of what she wants from Barry. And it's very, um, it's very clear that she is, she is ready for this man. 
And then she said, who's the cute guy with the wide blue eyes and the big bad? Mm, we all saw Saltburn. We know that was not a prosthetic. She is looking right at his big bed mm, and she is ready to go. And then she ends it with that sensual bridge and she just like, get into that falsetto. She goes into the chorus. Like she gets so sensual with it. And then she kind of just like, you know, she's really, she's like, I am ready for the bed cam. And then we get to the moment, or at least I'm assuming we get to the moment, and it is Espresso, the smash hit that you are. And again, this is a track like Please, Please, Please that we all know, we all love, we understand what she's saying. She is saying, she's like, I'm that me Espresso, I'm gonna keep you up all night. So they are, the two of them are together. It is too bad that his ex doesn't do it for him anymore. And now her his dreams are coming true because she can mount and do it for him. Like she is going to keep this man up all night, got him wrapped around her finger. Like she is ready to go. I also love, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but she said, my honey bee, come get this pollen. Bee could be a tie to Barry. Like she is that me espresso. They have finally met. She is going to keep him up all night and she is going to keep this man buzzing. And I just think, I love that. I, she's like, yep, I told you, here's what it is. And this is what it's going to be. And it's exactly what it is. I hope you're enjoying your espresso. I hope you enjoy being kept up all night. And this song is just so fun. It was like such a perfect way to give a nod to the start of this era. I don't know if she could have predicted how big this song was going to be and how major and monumental it was going to be in her career and the rollout of this album. But whoever, whether it was her or somebody on her team that decided, release this as the lead single right before Coachella and have this like killer rollout leading up to it. I hope they got the raise that they deserved because it is fan fucking tastic i love this song i love espresso espresso and please 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 i think they fit into this album so perfectly sometimes when you get the lead singles like especially with these two lead singles where espresso and please 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 they don't really sound that much alike they have like different vibes where espresso is more like upbeat the whole time and please 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 is kind of a little bit slowed down still has like a poppy beat to it and that like almost like a like a retro vibe to it, but they're definitely two different sounds. So we didn't really know what to expect going into this album, but when you hear them worked into the album and the whole body of work, they really just like, they complement it and highlight the album so well. And I love that they're spaced out a bit on the album where Please 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 is track number two and Espresso it's track seven, I believe it is. So we're getting like, as we're listening to the album, you are, you're like met with an old friend, very like, evenly spaced through the album so right at the beginning and then like right at the halfway mark you're like you're going through all these new tracks and you're like listening to it you're eating it up and then you get you're like greeted like i said with these old friends that you already know and love so you're like oh okay cool like I know where we're at, like I'm comfortable here. Let's get into the rest of this album. And that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're going right into Dumb and Poetic. Now, what I love about Dumb and Poetic and the way that it falls within the album is we have these like upbeat moments of bed chem and espresso back to back. And we are like, we come out of coincidence where she's like realizing all these things. Dare I say Kylie Jenner, that you're realizing things. And she's like coming to fruition of like what's going on. And then she meets this new man, Barry, in this situation. She meets him. And, you know, she is like dreaming about him and she is like fully like engulfed in this situationships into a relationship kind of uh, pipeline. Then we get Espresso where they finally, you know, they're keeping her up all night because it's that me Espresso. And then she brings us back to, you know, this other man in the picture and she's like slows it down for us. She kind of like takes us out of that, like the height of that Espresso and bed chem combo and brings us back into this. Like, don't forget about that fuckhead who completely ruined me and tried to be you know Mr. Self-Help Book and completely just like it destroyed me so I think the line that really stood out to me just from that first verse was the cherry pick lines from his self-help books like he is literally he's going in and he is reading all of these self-help books and just trying to like make himself look better or act better or like have these like one-off quotes or words that he wants to like throw into a conversation like if something's going bad or if he wants to like comfort somebody kind of I'm sure he like use some of these self-help book tactics to let the girl open up to her and be like hey you can you know let me open up to you and then but then I'm gonna like dip I'm sure he got that from his self-help book and that is so Sean Mendez coded like he is the definition he's the target audience 
of who is buying self-help books. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes sense. He's on this, like, this guide to God, and he's, like, trying to become more, you know, one with himself, and he's meditating in the woods, and he's, like, trying to become one with nature. Like, I know his bedside table is stacked with self-help books. So this, I'm just like, yep, this is exactly who's painting this picture right from the jump. And then <laughs> the line where she says, um, you jack off to Leonard Cohen. I talked about this on my episode on Wednesday, but Leonard Cohen is a songwriter and he is Canadian and Sean Mendez is also Canadian. But to also tie that in there, Sean recently covered Hallelujah, which is one of his songs at his comeback show in London. I believe it was uh, somewhere like the early summer. I forget exactly when it was, but that show kind of ties back in later in the song. So we'll get into that in a second. But that's why this kind of like directly points me to this being a Sean song and not a Joshua Bassett song. There was a lot of back and forth about who this one was about, but I think she's overwriting about Joshua Bassett. I think anything about him would have been on emails I can't send. And I think she um she sent her emails. She, you know, did her big one. And now she's on to the next one. So I saw some comparisons of this song being tied back to Joshua Bassett, especially because he has covered Leonard Cohen before as well. But I think the self-help books, I think Sean covering Hallelujah recently, both of them being Canadian. And I'm jumping ahead, but the whole mushroom line, I think it just kind of like paints the picture and like points to the fact that this is a Sean Mendes song, but I said we're getting ahead of ourselves. So let's put it in reverse for a second. Um, and I mean, that chorus where she's like, just because you talk like one doesn't make you a man is so beautifully brutal. Like she's like, you can come to me and talk to me like a man, but I know you are cherry picking those lines from your self-help books. You're like picking a few lines to just like throw in your back pocket and come out and like sound like a man, but that doesn't mean you are. You, your actions are not matching what you're saying and actions speak louder than words. And in this situation, she's like, your actions are not matching what you're saying. You are not a man and you are acting like a little bitch. <laughs> uh, speaking of a little bitch, she goes on to say, you're so sad that there's no communication, but baby, you put us in the situation. This kind of ties me back to Sharpest Tool where she keeps repeating, we never talk about it. She's saying here, like, you get so upset that we're not communicating and, you know, there's no, we're not talking things through, but you're the one putting us in the situation. Why do I have to be the one to bring these things up when you're the one with the wrongdoings? You're the one ghosting me. You're the one fucking me over. You're the one who's being the shortcoming in this relationship. Why do I have to bring things up? You're so sad there's no communication. Communicate. Like, it's a two-way street, you know? Like, you put us in this situation, get us out of it, because this that's it's all your fault why does sabrina or whoever is relating to the song why do they have to be the one to bring it up and like make things awkward because as soon as you bring something up you i'm sure you guys can relate as soon as you bring something up and you know you're like it's like bringing up a red flag they're like oh no you're acting crazy and you're da -da 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 this that and the third and they want to like flip the script and put it on you like no baby you want communication communicate it is not that fucking hard. I also, somebody, I, when I was doing my research, somebody tied the lines back to decode, um, where she said, I overanalyze it front to back and beside it. Where else can we go? There's nothing left to decode. Done looking for the signs in the gaps and the silence. It's just getting old. Obviously, I don't think these songs are connected, but Sabrina has clearly dealt with people who do not know how to communicate, and they are just like sitting in the gaps and sitting in the silence. They don't talk about it. There's no communication, and, you know, there's nothing left here to decode, because these men are not the sharpest tool in the shed. It all, you know, it all ties back together. <laughs> um, the second verse, she gets into saying, you run so fast back to the hearts that you're breaking. That to me kind of paints the picture of Sean being with Camila, running to Sabrina and them being together. And then within like two weeks or so, running right back to Camila because that timeline is very close. Like I said, I talked about it in my last episode, but just to kind of bring everybody up to speed, Sean and Camila broke up. And a few months later, he was seen with Sabrina and they were kind of like on a fling doing their thing from like January to late March. And then his car drove itself to LA and to, to Palm Springs and they were at Coachella with Camila. So he's running so fast from the heart that he's breaking. So he like, he ran from Camila to Sabrina. He ran from Sabrina back to Camila. This kind of just like situation that I'm painting there. And again, like there's even a line, a few, in a few, uh, in a few lines, there's a lyric that she says, uh, you crash the car and abandoned the wreckage. Fuck with my head like a some type of fetish. Again, drove the car from her legs to Palm Springs and coincidence. I guess Sean Mendez just enjoys fucking with girls' heads because, like, 
she keeps saying she's like you literally like you're abandoning this wreckage that you're making you're fucking with my head like some type of fetish you're crashing this car and running from it you're mad there's no communication communicate like she is fully just saying like you're making this mess and you're not cleaning it up and that's not okay like that is such a shitty fuckboy thing to do and i guess sean mendez he must just get off with fucking with girls heads and like that must be that must be his thing I don't know. Um, the last line that I want to talk about on this song, or the last two rather, um, she says that he saves all of his breath for his floor meditation. Again, that is so Sean Mendes coding, just like the self-help books. Like he is the one to sit on the floor, no shoes on, like he's on the ground meditating, probably shirtless, like trying to like get a thirst trap Instagram. But he also doesn't care about Instagram because you know he doesn't like social media because he's connecting to nature. But he wants to show that he's meditating, and you know he he learned this in a self-help book. Like, he just, I feel like it's like smoke and mirrors in the situation where like he wants to paint a picture of himself in one way, but his actions are leading a completely different direction. And then the final line that we're going to talk about, she says, I promise the mushrooms aren't changing your life. Sean mentioned at the show in London, the same show where he sang hallelujah at, that he was like experimenting with mushrooms and he was, I guess, trying to again find some higher power or like connect to God or some shit. I don't know. Again, probably read it in some self-help book. Um, and I think, again, these lines are just kind of tying it back to it being about Sean Mendez and just like painting the picture of him completely abandoning the wreckage and just like fucking with her head and running away from it. And again, the whole hook of the song, like just because you talk like one doesn't make you a man. The last line, just because you leave like one doesn't make you a man. Like she is just like doubling down, laying in on this. She is pedal to the metal not getting off this man's neck and i love it she took those fucking high heels and stepped on his neck and crushed his fucking windpipe one can only hope <laughs> Moving right along to questionably one of the funniest songs on the album, Slim Pickens. I love this track. This is one that we had heard before the album came out, but not in like the final, you know, form. She performed at the Grammy Museum when she was there with Jack Antonoff, which he did produce this song. And I just, I love this song. I think it is such a fun little switch up for the album. It's one of the only really like kind of like twangy, I hate to say country. It's like Casey Musgraves-esque kind of vibe um, on the album. But again, the, her and the producers is such a good job at like adding in different sounds and genres and it somehow all just worked so well genre bending is not easy for any artist whether it's on a whole project or through an album but i think sabrina did a perfect job at adding in some pop some like country-esque some slower ballad -y, not ballad but like slower kind of songs like she does such a perfect job at mending all of these genres but still making it her own sound if that makes sense like it doesn't even seem like we're listening to different genres like we're just listening to a sabrina carpenter album and it makes sense because she can perfectly execute these genres and these sounds and these lyrics and this production style across all of her work it is just chef's kiss she is incredible. So let's get into the song. My my favorite part of the song is where the imagery she paints. She says, I'm playing them like a slot machine. If they're winning, I'm just losing. Which just, I just imagine her like sitting in Vegas, this like exhausted, it's like 3 a.m. out of her mind, putting money into a slot machine. And the slot machine might be winning, but she's still losing money. Like she's giving this machine her all. And she might be winning some stuff on the machine, but she's not hitting the jackpot. Like she's putting in a dollar, she's winning three. Like, all right, big whoop, cool. You know, that's kind of the imagery I get. And I love that. I think especially for the tone and the message of this song it is the perfect way to kind of just like tell us exactly how she's feeling i also love um in the chorus he says since the good ones are deceased or taken i'll just keep on moaning and bitching to me i kind of want to laugh because of that switch up the typical saying is like bitching and moaning like i feel like that's the more well-known saying and this could just be maybe it sounded better sonically or like in the lyrics or when she's singing it but i think switching moaning and bitching is it almost makes me feel like she's going to get her fix from these men like they're going to make her moan but then she's going to bitch about it where typically you'd be bitching and moaning and it would just be like complaining over and over but knowing sabrina and knowing how um, like sex positive and sex forward she is which we love she i i wouldn't put it past her to like intentionally switch moaning and bitching that way to be like i'm gonna get my fixing from this man i'm you know i'm gonna let him do his big one on me and you know 
get me by because you know a girl's gonna live too but she's still gonna bitch about it after and that just whether that was or not i'm gonna choose to interpret it that way and just kind of get that fun little that little you know nod there um and then i think the line that really took people by storm when she performed at the grammy museum was this boy doesn't even know the difference between they're there and they are yet he's naked in my room like i said she's going to get her fix from him she's gonna moan and then she's gonna bitch and it just it's like she's like literally she's like i'm picking at the bottom of the the barrel with these men he doesn't even know proper grammar but yet here he is naked in my room ready to go uh she also says that he's missing all the things that he's missing so to me i see this as two ways so missing all the things he's missing to me the first way i see it is she's he's missing the things that she wants so missing you know she maybe she wants maybe as simple as someone who has proper grammar like there's things that he's missing from himself that are never going to make him perfect for her but she's just like going along with it for now because all the good ones are deceased or taken but then you could also kind of paint it as him missing things like the things that he's missing like not as far as like things that he lacks but things that he's physically missing so maybe an ex or maybe you know she says later in the song like uh where is it uh since the good ones call their ex when they're wasted missing what he's missing so it kind of just like ties in that double not double entendre but like that double meaning of like he's missing certain things that sabrina wants but he's also physically missing things in his life which obviously is is not a perfect situation in a relationship uh she also goes on to say god knows he isn't living large this song is clearly not about barry like i said in saltburn that was not a prosthetic barry is living large this man clearly is not despite being naked in her bedroom it is what it is sometimes you have to you know sometimes it's not about the size of the wave it's the motion of the ocean you have to just kind of you settle for what you got it is what it is moan and bitch later uh, and then the outro is just so perfect like i said she says since the good ones call their exit wasted kind of tying in that missing what he's missing and since the lord forgot my gay awakening and now she hasn't confirmed or denied if that is a grinder noise after that line i am choosing to believe that she purposely put that little noise in there to sound like the grinder noise add a little nod to you know to the gays just be like you guys are gonna get it you'll laugh at it i don't know if it is or not i haven't if she has confirmed or denied it i haven't seen it but i just it was such a funny little production choice i fucking loved it it is so funny and she ends the song saying i'll just be here in the kitchen serving up some moaning and bitching so again just tying back in that moaning and bitching situation she's like i'll just i'll be here doing my thing and i'll figure it out you know when the right one comes along the right one comes along i love this track i don't really know i think it might just be like a track that they wrote just as like a mindset i don't think this is a pointed at anybody specifically um but i i love this track i think it is so good and yeah like i said jack antonoff he can do no wrong in my eyes and now we have made it to one of my top three tracks on the album juno let alone this being like a perfect pop song the fact that they are referencing one of my favorite movies of all time just makes this song even better. I think Juno is genuinely one of the best movies ever. I like, I have it on DVD. Like, I fucking love that movie so much. And referencing it, like, it is about damn time. Somebody put some respect on this goddamn movie's name. I love this song. The intro to me is so dreamy. It almost makes me think of, like, in like an early 90s maybe like an 80s movie where like you would see like people walking on the beach think like the beginning of greece where like danny and sandy are like playing in the sand they're like on the beach and the water is like perfectly glistening and it's just like that dreamy like hopelessly devoted like that whole like just like over the moon in love vibe you know you know what i'm talking about when like you see that scene in a movie and the beach the water is just like perfectly glistening listen to the intro of this song and picture that and tell me it doesn't like perfectly fit so well just in the intro i i just love it um she goes on to say in the first chorus that he is the whole package babe i like the way you fit god bless your dad's genetic so kind of tying back to like he's finally the whole package he's got it all so back to uh one track back where in slim pickens like this guy's missing some things she finally has the whole package and not only does he have the whole package personality wise he's got the whole package because god bless his dad's genetics and i like the way it fits so like i said she is not afraid to get down and dirty and just be very sex forward which we get into very quickly with this song specifically the pre-chorus of this song is so fun it gets so like spunky it just gets so fun i imagine the song as her again like kind of like tying back to like a 90s rom-com kind of movie she's like 
sitting in her bed, very like Lizzie McGuire-esque. She's like sitting on her bed uh, on her stomach, like writing in her journal, and she's writing that first verse. And then the pre-chorus comes in where it's like that guitar comes in. She like grabs her hairbrush and she's like singing the song around in her room. Um, and she's like, you make me wanna skin. Dun, dun, dun. That whole part, she's like, you make me wanna fall in love. Do you wanna try my fuzzy pink handcuffs? Like it quickly goes from her just like being in love and like wanting to be with this guy to like, do you wanna try my handcuffs? Like, let's get down and dirty um and then she goes into the chorus i know you want my touch for life if you love me right then who knows i might let you make me juno ties back to good graces where she says i'm dreaming of writing my vows rock and cradles like she wants this baby she wants you to make her juno love her right and she is ready to be strapped the fuck down for you um one of me is cute but two though give it to me baby she is ready she wants to be locked and loaded wife this bitch up give her a ring, give her a baby. She wants to be Juno. And I love that for her. Go, you know, get on with your bad self, Sabrina. I, I love how open and like forward she is with her sex life. And I don't say that in a way to like sexualize her. I think, especially as a man, like I need to obviously walk a thin line, but I'm not saying any of this to be like, oh my God, like she's doing it in like a, you know, I, you got you know i'm saying it and like i'm genuinely cheering her on i'm like good for you bitch we need more of this like more sex forward more sex positivity we love to see it and you know turn her into juno let's get down and dirty mr keoghan <laughs> um moving along in this song this next line spoke to me on so many levels she said i showed my friends and we high-fived sorry if you feel objectified and this ties me back to please 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 where she's saying like oh my god my friends never approve of the people that i date like every time i show them someone like they think my taste is so bad and like i said i have had my fair share of shit men in my life and you can ask any single one of my friends they will tell you that my track record with men is absolute garbage so when i started dating my current boyfriend and brought him around this is this is their high five moment they all were like finally he found a good one he is you know he got he crosses all the boxes he is a good one so if anybody is listening out there and maybe you're dating the people before the high five of your friends hang hang on he will come you will find your guy who your friends are high-fiving over take it from me i've had plenty of people who are my please 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 and now you find your juno eventually you will finally have your friends who will approve they will high five you just you know you gotta you gotta weed them out you know it, it sucks it's a treacherous ride but sometimes you just have to you know pull the weeds out and eventually you'll find your flower and your friends will high five over them <laughs> um she goes on to saying she's like this guy's giving me more than just butterflies do you want to try out some freaky positions and then she she kind of breaks that fourth wall again she's like have you ever tried this one where she just kind of like she takes the musicality out of it she is just speaking to the audience and again i just love the way that she talks in songs it just adds an extra sprinkle of sabrina isms as i keep saying and i just i love it it adds such a nice little tie-in to the song and then we get to the bridge which is just so like sweet and it's breathy and it's fun and then it gets so spunky and she's saying she's like I'm so fucking horny, like, adore me, hold me, explore me, mark your territory and tell me I'm the only one. I am so fucking horny. And then we go into this killer guitar break and it just makes me kind of tie back into like, she's writing, she's like singing, maybe this part, she's like sitting in her vanity, getting ready. And she's like singing it to herself and like hoping he hears her message. And then like, I don't know, she like gets up and she's like dancing around her room. I, something about me is I visualize songs a lot. Like I see music videos in my head when I listen to music and this one specifically i can see an entire music video in my head with sabrina the whole like 90s aesthetic like i just i don't know something about the song is just so visual to me and i love it it is so good that guitar break at the end and then going into that second bridge i mean that second chorus it is just so good i love this track definitely top three to me it is incredible Moving on, she kind of switches up the tempo a bit on this one. She goes from Juno talking about, you know, wanting someone to impregnate her to being lied to on Lie to Girls. And I think lyrically, this is one of the strongest songs on the album. It is so good. And assuming the song is about Shawn Mendes, is he just like a pathological liar? Like, do we know him to like not tell the truth? Because it kind of seems like that's where she's pointing at this. She starts out the song saying, don't swear on your mom. That is the first drink you've had in like a month. She's calling out his white lies. Like she knows he's perpetually lying to her, to other people. Like 
don't swear on your mom anymore. I know you're lying. The gig is up. Like, I get it. Um, she said, I can bend the ugly truth into something better. I'm stupid, but I'm clever. She's saying, she's like, I can take whatever you're lying to me about. I'm going to bend it. And I'm going to turn it into something better. Because like she says before, and like we've seen throughout this album, there are some instances where she is that bad bitch and like you do her wrong once and she is out. But then the other instances where like, that's not the situation. And that is just something that's so relatable. Like everybody wants to be good graces, but at the end of the day, sometimes we're lie to girls. Like you want to be good graces where like this guy fucks you over. You were out, lickety split, done, like signed, sealed, delivered. You won't see me again. But then on the other hand, like sometimes, you know, you don't have your best foot forward. You're not looking out for yourself. You're not in your own good graces. And you're more on your lies to girl shit where you're like, you know, like you can continue to lie to me and I will give you chance after chance after chance because like she says, and this is one of my favorite lyrics on the entire album. She says, I can make a shit show look a whole lot like forever. I just, the writing on this song, I think is so incredible. And it really, this song does such a good job at, again, just putting like, putting to paper a feeling that so many people including myself have felt and I just ugh, I love this song so like I said she's bending the ugly truth into something better she's stupid but she's clever because she can kind of you know she can she can paint a pretty picture out of something shitty again I said I can make a shit show look a whole lot like forever the note that I put there just oof girl like I feel you I understand what you're saying and then that chorus she's saying you don't have to lie to girls if they like you they'll lie to themselves like if she likes you enough she's gonna lie to herself and convince herself this shit show is worth forever it is such a sad but relatable type of line and like Ugh, the lyrics of the song, the second verse, just, it is so good. Kind of changes the tune a little bit. She changes the tempo and she's saying, all your best excuses, they don't stand a chance against all the chances that I'm going to give you. That writing is impeccable. So all of your excuses do not stand a chance against the number of chances I'm going to give you time and time again. You can continue to fuck me over. You can lie to me. You can make up these excuses. They don't stand a chance. I'm going to give you a chance. Just save it. Like, don't even waste your energy you've got me wrapped around your finger it is good um and the next line she said you don't even have to try turn you into a good guy you don't have to lift a finger she's gonna convince it you, she's gonna convince herself excuse me like you don't have to lift a finger this shit show is forever I, I just, ugh, I love the writing on this song. She continues to say that lucky for you, I'm just like my mother. And that just immediately ties me back into the line on the title track on emails I can't send. She says, when I'm 45, somebody calls me their wife and he fucks our lives in one selfish night. Don't think I'll find forgiveness as fast as my mom did. And God, I love you, but you're such a dipshit. She's, just, she's tying back. She's like, lucky for you, I am like my mom. I'm gonna forgive you. I don't know what that situation is. I don't know like what went down with her mom and maybe a past relationship her, her dad. I tried to do some research, but it seemed like they were, I, I don't know. I didn't do, clearly I didn't dig far enough, but it just, it made me think of that line because that line stood out to me when I listened to emails for the first time. And anytime I hear her talk about like a relationship and tie it to her mom, it just kind of lights that fire in my mind. So she's saying, lucky for you, I'm like my mom, I'm gonna forgive you. And then these next three lines, the buildup and the way that it just like, it just like, she's, taking this almost makes me feel like she's like taking herself out of the situation and seeing other people going through it she's like lucky for you i'm just like my mother then she says the girls outside the strip club getting her tarot card read we love to read the cold hard facts and swear they're incorrect we love to mistake butterflies for cardiac arrest and the way that she is screaming that butterfly cardiac arrest line and she's saying she's like there's girls you know we're out of the strip club seeing a psychic literally saying can you read my future and tell me if i'm in if it's in the the cards like tell me if this is the right guy for me and even when they give you the cold hard facts and swear that you are not in the right situation we're going to swear they're incorrect because we are making this shit show into forever god this song is so good so she goes into that like screaming and then back into that sweet chorus and then it kind of the outro just kind of like builds into that simple guitar and takes us out of it Sonically, I think this song does such a fantastic job at telling a full rounded story, starting out with her talking directly to her lover and being sweet to him because she's forgiving him. She's going to, you know, forgive him for whatever happened. She is completely just like, hey, save it like we're good and then that second chorus it kind of picks up and it builds a little bit and it keeps building and building and you can almost find like you see her realizing what is going on and like 
it, like sonically it sounds like she's like fighting with herself because she gets to that point where she's screaming and she screams the whole we're mistaking butterflies for cardiac arrest and then it crashes into something sweet again because again she's on this like merry-go-round or this like carousel where she is just continuously in this circle where it's good it's bad and then it's good again and it just keeps going that way and it just ends with just like a classic feathery light airy my friend jocelyn she said that somebody made a comment about how it's like glittery and that's like such a good way to explain how jack antonoff does production it's, just, it's like feathery it's glittery it's like it's light it's airy and it just has that like sweet jack antonoff like kiss to end it the perfect way this song is it's incredible from the writing to the production to the way that they tell a story through the music this song is it's incredible. Gen like when I was reading the lyric, listening to it, I understood, but like reading the lyrics deeper and going into it more, I was like, holy shit, this song is heavy. It is so, it's so good. And speaking of heavy songs, we are finally at the end of the album, of the, the standard album. We are going to talk about the two bonus tracks, but to wrap up the standard album, we have made it to Don't Smile, which what a heartbreaking song. And I think the way that this ends the album, again, kind of tying back into Slim Pickens, where she does the switch up of bitching and moaning and does moaning and bitching. She takes this classic line of don't cry because it happened, smile because, or don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. In this part, she's taking that classic phrase and she's saying, don't smile because it happened, cry because it's over. You're supposed to think about me every time you hold her. I, this is such a full circle moment on the album. If you think where we started with Taste and now we're ending with this, in Taste, she is singing, that song is a letter to the, the girlfriend who is his previous ex, but now his current girlfriend. And she's like, you know, you guys broke up, you got with me. We broke up, you got back with her. So in her mind, she's like, oh, he's probably going to come back to me eventually, but that's not the case. So it's a like, she's like, you're supposed to break up with her and get back with me the way you broke up with her the first time and got with me. Like, it's supposed to go back and forth. And she's starting to realize, like, that's not going to happen. He is not thinking about me when he holds her. He is full in on this time. Or like, and I'm not saying this is about Sean and Camila. This, I don't, I didn't really tie this into their relationship. I just think, like, in retrospect, when you take yourself out, like you take the people out of the album and just think about like album messages, like to think like, oh, he broke up with her once, he'll break up with her again and come back around to me. He's probably thinking about her while they're laying in bed together. That harsh reality of like, oh, he's not, that hurts. Like that's not a good feeling to have. Um, she make I love the reference she makes to like happy hour. Um, and like to him, like he's at happy hour, he's having fun, he's having a good time. But to her, like there's nothing happy about it. Uh, she it kind of ties in like, I'm not happy. I'm not going to smile because it happened. I'm going to cry because it's over. I am done. And then in the chorus, she has that like overlay of the, I want you to miss me. And she's repeating it over and over. And to me, that's kind of like her inner thoughts trying to come through. And like, I am begging you, miss me, miss me when you hold her, come back to me. And like, even just on top of the chorus, like hearing it in the background, she's like, with that whole like, the don't smile because it happened, cry because it's over. You know, she's singing that, but really what she wants to say is like, I want you to miss me. Please miss me. She's begging him. Like, she is like, listen, like, what do I have to do? It's just, it's so heartbreaking, but it's such like a real and raw emotion. And one of my favorite things she says in this song is, I pour my feelings into the microphone, which is such a good line for the final track of an album to say like, I just poured my feelings into my microphone. That's exactly what we just listened to the last 12 tracks. And we're still listening to you pour your feelings out. Like such a good, such a good line for a final track. And I just love the way that it falls within the album. And then one of the last things that, or one of the, the two final things on this track we're going to talk about is she says that, she said, I want the girls to delete your number because I don't want to be tempted to pick up when you want to fall back in. And she's saying, she's like, I don't want, I can't delete your number because I don't want to. I want my friends to do it because I don't want to be tempted when you want to come back around and, you know, pick things where we left off. But you can fake it, but you know that I know, she says. So she knows that even if he does pick up the phone and try to, you know, maybe he's gaslighting her, maybe he's trying to, like, trick her into something more, I know that it's over. Like, and you know that I know that. So you can fake it, but I know I see right through you. It's just, it, this song is heartbreaking. It is so good. And I think it is a perfect way to end this album. 
this album, again, we're not done yet. We have two more tracks we're going to talk about quick, but I just think as a whole, this album does such a good job at showing the, the relationship, like the, the, the roller coaster that you can go on. And I hate to even say relationship. It's more so like just like the roller coaster you can go on in any type of situationship, in any kind of love connection. Like there's ups, there's downs. You're going to forgive somebody. You're not going to forgive them. You're going to like, they're, one one guy can do you wrong. You're going to kick him to the curb. The other guy can do you wrong three times over. You're still going to go back to him. And I think she just like, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just exposing myself for having like a shitty dating history prior to my current boyfriend. But like this just, this album is fan fucking tastic i i can't get enough i truly cannot get enough and we don't have to get enough because she has released two bonus tracks so we're going to talk about them really quick she dropped needless to say and busy woman and both of these tracks are so strong starting off with needless to say right off the bat i love the play on word so obviously the phrase the, the title rather is needless to say but in the song she's saying you need less to say and the whole point of the song is fuck the media fuck the people online fuck the people who are criticizing me for dating and for being a 20 something year old girl and just like trying to figure out what I want in life uh the one line she says I get you think it's funny all the boys who love and left me people who are criticizing you know maybe there's unfortunately the narrative with Sabrina of like her being with a guy after they break up with the girl and then the guy going back to them which I, I to me has only happened twice but I do think since it was in the limelight and like unfortunately driver's license was like the biggest song of the moment when it came out so like it just got more attention so she's saying she's like oh you think it's so funny when the boys love me and then they leave me which is like a shitty thing to do but then in the chorus she really just like gives it to them she says you need less to say about anything you need more to do than to just focus on me try working on you i promise that you'll be much happier if you do she said pretty dress awkward angle but bet you zoomed in close and held it up to show your friends people make fun of her looks and just always kind of like criticizing and this is not just about her like this is about like any women in the public eye like they love to catch a bad angle and be like she's on a bender she's heartbroken like she looks like you know i mean just think about like the way that they painted like britney when she was going through her divorce like any slightly off-putting angle they could get of her immediately they were like britney is off the rails and to though it's not to that extent it just gives me that idea of like people kicking you when you're down and finding any way to just like paint you in a negative light whether you're in a good space or you're not and then i think the best way to end the conversation about this line is the way that she completely eats up these fucking losers she goes one-way conversations how's the weather in your mother's basement that line is fucking killer literally a one-way conversation you are talking to yourself you are posting this shit online you have nobody to talk to you have nobody in your life to like have a better conversation with so you need to talk more about me and not talk about yourself or focus on yourself or make yourself happier because you're just having these one-way dead-end conversations with the internet with the media oh and by the way how's the weather in your mother's basement like she ate them the fuck up. I love this track. I do kind of like the fact that it wasn't on the standard album because I think with Sabrina, like I have been saying this whole episode, she's very much in on the joke. Like she's fine with laughing at herself and like fine with like taking what people are saying about her and spinning it in her own narrative. So if this song was on the album, it would kind of come off in a way of like, oh, she's like sticking it to the media and she's trying to tell them to go fuck themselves. But I don't think she really wants to say that to them. I think she just she was probably in a moment where she wrote the song and she was like, fuck these people in their mother's basements, but I'm not going to let them know it's bothering me. And this song not being on the standard album to me says that she was like, I want my my fans to know. I don't give a fuck what they say. They are all losers. It's kind of like our inside joke with each other. Obviously, people are going to hear it. The media is going to hear it, but it wasn't on the initial standard. So it kind of just like gives you that like that like afterthought or she's like okay well like the people who want to listen and really care about me will find this song and will listen and i just want them to know like fuck the people in their mother's basement let them have their one of my conversations i'm still going to end up on top and then moving on to the final bonus track we have busy woman this song it's like good grace's bigger sister to me she is she is doubling down on the fact that like if you love her right if you want to be with her right she will be you know, the best girlfriend, wife, whatever it may be in the world. But if you don't want her, 
fuck you, bitch. <laughs> she says, I'm so mature, collected, and sensible, except when I get hit with rejection. To turn me down, well, that's just unethical. I love that line. Like, you don't want to be with me, you're going to turn me down, bitch. That is literally unethical. She then goes in, and this ties back to where I said, like, I would be afraid to cross Sabrina Carpenter. She kind of proves my point. She said, I'll turn into someone you're scared to know. If you need my love, my clothes are off. If you don't, I didn't want your bitch ass anyway. Again, tying into good graces. Like, if you need me and you need my love, oh, bitch, I am down bad for you. My clothes are off. Let's go. Like, let's study this bed chem together. But if you don't want me, actually, I didn't want your bitch ass anyway. I have plenty of men in my phone and I don't need your ass. She goes on to say that she's going to take an everything shower for this man. She says there's so much to shave and lipstick to reapply, which a girl taking an everything shower, I know that is a big deal. And she is willing to take an everything shower for you. All you have to do is treat her right. But if you don't want her, she's going to deem you gay. I think that line is fucking hilarious. I'm hoping... I saw a little bit of backlash of people being like, you can't use gay as a bad thing. I'm hoping people just like get over it and grow up. Like, it's just like a funny line. It, she's not saying it in a bad way. Like, it's kind of, uh, people are tying it to Picture to Burn by Taylor Swift. They're like, I'll tell all your friends that you're gay. I, I, I see both sides, but I think in this sense, she's not doing it in a negative light. I think she just like wanted a funny line and a funny line she got. If being a pop star doesn't work out, Sabrina Carpenter had a clear shot at being a comedian. Like, she's so fucking hilarious. She means no harm with her lyrics she's just she's just funny and i think this line is hilarious um she says i wouldn't let you come into my calendar any night but if you want my kisses i'll be your perfect missus till the day one of us dies and she's a busy woman she has a lot going on but she will make time for you but again act up and you are out of her fucking calendar she will delete your calendar invite and she will never see her at happy hour at 5 p.m on thursday that calendar invite is out the window just as fast as you decided to fuck our girl sabrina carpenter over. And I think that is the perfect way to end this episode. I could go on and on and on about how much I love this album. It is fantastic. It is absolutely one of my favorite albums released this year. I, I love it. I can't say enough good things about it. I don't think there's a single bad song, not a bad moment, not a bad second. It is incredible. Sabrina Carpenter, the pop star, the woman, the icon that you are, I love this body of work. I love her. I just, we are so lucky to be alive at the same time as Sabrina Carpenter. And that brings us to the end of the episode. This was so much fun. I love these episodes where I really deep dive into bodies of work and just like get into the nitty gritty, like I said, of these albums. And it's such a fun one to do it for. Like I said, if you are new here, if this is the first time you were listening, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you liked it. This is not our normal run of show, so make sure you stick around, subscribe to the show, follow us on all of our socials. You're at Two Pop to Handle. I would love to have you join the Two Pop to Handle family. We talk about Sabrina a lot always in a positive light. I don't like to bring any women down. I will talk shit about men nonstop, but women, usually I draw the line there. So come join the family. I will catch you guys on Wednesday. And for everybody else listening, thank you guys so much for listening to this bonus episode of Two Pop to Handle. Like I always say, make sure you share this with a friend, send it to one person. It's simple math. I will double in listeners. If anybody would like to follow me, I am at Two Pop to Handle on all socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. I am there yapping. My personal socials are at Andrew Nucatola, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, you name it. I am there. And with that, I will catch you guys on Wednesday for our main show. Bye!